se graba. Estamos grabando. Welcome to this invited session. Uh, Javier Gómez Pont is a very maxima, very maxima, sorry, it's a very Mexican mathematician working at CIMAT in Guanajuato for the last 30 years. He began his mathematics studies at UNAM in Mexico City and continued them in Princeton. He has formed many students over the years in Mexico. His interests lie in developing algebraic methods to help to understand geometric situations and in particular singularities. I am very fortunate to have known Javier for the last 34 years now, and he has always transmitted his infectious enthusiasm, which I am sure you will appreciate in his talk on the geometry of, oh, this went away from my screen, on the geometry of a homological invariant of a plane curve singularity. Javier, we are all ears. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank the, uh, the, the, the organizers for inviting me to give this presentation and above all, uh, the people which are listening to me. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, let me say this in Spanish. A pesar de la distancia, me siento entre amigos. So I think this, uh, 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 even though the distance, I feel among friends. So I would like to ask Fernando to make a tango on these uh, words and I, uh, I will make a bolero. So let me, uh, <clears throat> so I will give a very elementary talk, which it will be a very basic uh, thing uh, to which I have arrived, uh, looking for the understanding in, in uh, the difficult problem, but I have been forced to simplify the hypothesis uh, to the most to arrive to some understanding and so this is uh, what I'm going to explain to you. Uh, this is joint work that I have been uh, doing with uh, Lili Alaniz, Enrique Artal, Cristian Bonatti, Miguel Angel de la Rosa, Manuel Gonzalez Villa y Pablo Portilla, uh, and other people, uh, of course, no? So uh, first, the, 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 the object we want to analyze is a very simple object. It's a polynomial in two variables. So it's specified by giving a finite number of complex numbers, or it could also be a convergent power series. That's the algebraic object. Now, associated to this algebraic object, we have a geometric object, which it describes, which is the, uh, the, 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 the objective of this talk. So let's take a, a, a small ball around zero, and the function gives a partition of the space into the different fibers. So this is the set of points where the function is constant. And so uh, if we restrict to a small disk in, in the complex plane in the image, and we take its inverse image, uh, so that's the, the open set U, we have a, 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 a function from a set U into, this, uh, into the disk. And, so we, and we would like to understand this, this decomposition. Now, if the function f uh, admits a factorization into different irreducible factors into primes in the ring of holomorphic function, then the fiber of over zero, when the ball is sufficiently small, it will be a disjoint union of S zero disks where S zero is the number of components in the factorization. So, the, the, so this, this F0 will be a connected singular surface with S0 boundary components and one singular point. So we are starting to see that uh, the information at zero will give us how many boundary components uh, uh, this fiber over zero has. Now in this picture over here, you're looking at the S zero disks, but really this is an oversimplified picture because really instead of having these uh, uh, simple uh, intersections with the sphere, the unit sphere, they are actually knots. And these knots are 
knotted knots in between them. And so uh, these disks, the, 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 the F0, then is these disks got embedded in a knotting, in a, in a knotted way in, 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 a, in C2, in R4. Now, <clears throat> if we take a lambda, a some positive number, a small positive number, then the F lambda, the fun where the function F is equal to lambda, is a connected oriented surface with compact closure. It has this S, S boundary components, and this should be S zero boundary components, the, the one before, and it has some genus, some positive genus, which is this number of handles, and <clears throat> Uh, we will be using the, uh, the, the so this 2g plus s minus 1 is the rank of the first homology group of f lambda <clears throat> I, I will say more about this this uh, so we will be centering on this uh, first homology group and this number can also that we call mu can also be computed uh, as the codimension in the ring of holomorphic functions of the ideal generated by the partial derivatives of f. So uh, th this brings in a very interesting topic in what's the relation between a function and its partial derivatives, first partial derivatives. And so this brings uh, the, my interest in this topic is in this relation between the topology and the algebra. Uh, I have not finished, or we have not finished the analysis of this relation between the topology and the algebra. And so today's lecture will be basically centered on what we have understood on the topological part of the, of the picture. Uh, so let's see. Now, uh, I, I want to convince you that the correct picture to think on is this one which I am drawing to you. It is not like this previous one. So uh, when, <clears throat> uh, 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 so, the, 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 so the, 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 this fiber is highly structured. So it is not, uh, it, it has this number of components at the boundary, which is given by the factorization over zero. But then inside is, is some surface of genus G, but, this genus G is a highly structured uh, set, as I will show. And so uh, in order to understand uh, what we obtained, it's convenient to, to understand this, this, this picture. So this picture will consist of having several uh, neurons, which are these uh, where the genus is concentrated. And then between these different subsurfaces, we have these axons or these tubes which are connecting the different subsurfaces. Uh, uh, as I will explain, this picture is very helpful in, in understanding the, the following uh, situation. So <clears throat> the theory of resolution of plane curve singularities uh, uh, provides for us the following information. Uh, usually they don't present uh, this resolution of plane curve singularity in this way, but for me, it is helpful to, to express it in this way. So, uh, uh, so in, 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 the, in the process of resolution, one blows up, you, you blow up the singular point until uh, the, the, these original curves, this F0, the fiber over zero becomes transversal to the exceptional divisors. And so a, a fiber, a nearby fiber, F equal to lambda, will be very close to these exceptional divisors. So at each exception, we are going to, the theorem of, of resolution of singularities tells, tells us that uh, around the exceptional divisors, the fiber is finite to one. We have a projection to this exceptional divisor. And at the set of points where two of the divisors intersect, 
then we have a, 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 a function which is of the form x to the n divided by y to the n. It is, it is, it is a very simple function. And uh, inside these places where the intersection of two divisors come, that's where these axons are. So the, the, the neurons are the ones which are around the exceptional divisors and the axons, the connectors between the different uh, the neurons happen at the intersection. At this intersection, it's not only one. So in this small neighborhood, then the, the fiber intersects in a finite number of annulus of, of rings. So in this other picture that we have over here, we have outlaid this information. And so over here is, here's where the, 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 the reducible components are coming in. And then we have this fat neuron, and then we have different small neurons. <clears throat> and the fact is, uh, th this is what the, the theorem of, of resolution of singularities will tell us, is that the monodromy map that I will e explain, which is a map which goes from the fiber to the fiber, this lambda fiber, then it will be preserving this structure. Uh, so it, it, it means that it's going to be sending the, uh, I'm sorry. So it's going to be sending the, the neurons to the, to, the, to the neurons, but at the same level, at the same level. And it's going to be sending the axons into the axons, also preserving the levels. So the monodromy action preserves this decomposition. Now, at each neuron, then when you when you consider the, the map, it's a periodic map. So after a finite number of steps, it's the identity. So we can find the common n in such a way that the iteration of the monodromy map to the power n is the identity on the neurons. And then what happens at the dent twist? It, what happens at the, at the rings? At the rings, we have a dent twist. A dent twist is you by one, you twist by one, by two, you twist by two, you twist by three. And so in, in, in that sense, the monodromy map iterated to a finite number of times will be a very simple function which consists of the identity on each of these neurons. And we will have a twisting, a strictly positive twisting on each of these axons. And so in this geometric way, we can decompose the monodromy map into a periodic part. That is where the, where the neurons are and a non-periodic part, which is these, these axons, because we have this twisting. And if we twist one time, then if we iterate again, then we twist two times and then twist three times, twist four times. So it's non-periodic. In this way, we can visually, geometrically see the periodic part of the monodromy map and the non-periodic part of the, of the monodromy map. So <clears throat> let U tilde be the resolution of the of the of F zero, no, and let A K be the exceptional divisors from formed by these blowing ups, and uh, the strict transforms of F zero, and then with this we form the dual graph of the resolution, which uh, consists of the for one point for each one of these exceptional divisor or the components of of the strict transforms of F zero, and for gamma one. So this is the, 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 the edges of the graph is if, if they have no empty intersection. So it's a classical theorem of resolution of singularities that this is a tree. This, this, this is a tree. Now, we're going, to, uh, uh, we're going to do the following. We're going to, <clears throat> to form a new graph. We're going to construct a graph over the resolution graph. And uh, to do this, we take a, a covering of, of the exceptional divisors by these open sets 
uh, where we have this uh, finite covering, and then we have these other uh, open sets around the intersections. Right. We consider this UK minus the intersection. So this is a, a, a tubular neighborhood of the sphere minus a finite number of points. So this is one family of the covering. And then another family of the covering will be this around one of these squares. And so <clears throat> we have that this, uh, the surface F lambda intersected with BK is, 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 is a covering transformation with the projection. And that this, when we intersect in these square, squares over here, we have, a, 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 we have these joint rings. And so this MK and MK1, this is the multiplicity of vanishing of the function when we pull it up to the to the resolution of, 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 of singularities. The function vanishes to a certain order in one exceptional divisor, another one exceptional divisor. The common factors, the uh, uh, minimal, uh, uh, maximum common divisor, the maximal common divisor of the two numbers gives the number of rings and we attach a weight, which is the quotient of, of the two, these two numbers. And now the graph that we're going to construct over the resolution graph is that we're going to put the connected components corresponding to the exceptional divisors or the intersections of two of them. And this graph will have a, so the, the, the graph will, will look like this. So for every point, for every, connected component of this, we put a point in this new graph. Now this, when we send it over to the exceptional divisor, which corresponds to these two, that will be the map which goes from gamma tilde to gamma. So we have a map which goes from this new graph, which is recording the connected components of the, of the surface F lambda in these neighborhoods. And, and then the monodromy map will be moving the, each component to another component. And so in, the, in that sense, the monodromy map is a map from this new graph. This gamma tilde uh, codifies the non-periodic part of the geometric uh, monodromy. And it also provides a, interesting uh, invariant subspaces, which are the ones, this is the disjoint union of the axons, and then the disjoint union of the neurons. So this will be what is called the weight filtration. In, 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 so the, a, a filtration means that you are going to be having a, a direct sum uh, or a, 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 an increasing union of subspaces uh, so in that sense, we are going to consider this, uh, the weight filtration in, in, in doing this, doing the union of the axons, that's the first set. And the other set will be the union of the neurons. And then, <clears throat> uh, okay, so now we will uh, replace this geometric picture of pieces of surfaces with a homological object. And so the homological object is the first homology group. So we will have a, a so the a homology group, one first homology group of a surface is a very simple object because you can express it as the formal sum of closed paths with integer coefficients, modulo the boundary with weights of subsurfaces. So, so in, 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 in this, so this is this is the first homology group. Now, there's this is something which is going to be very important to what we're going to be doing is that we want to consider this first homology group also with cup product with intersection product of one cycles, and so this, as one knows, is this the product of two one cycles is equal to. Uh, so you sum over the intersection when you put them in transversal uh, position and you put a plus one or a minus one depending on the orientation. Now, this bilinear form is degenerate on a subspace. 
And the, this is called the radical. The, the radical is those elements which are, in, in, with respect to the interior product, are zero with everyone. And so these ones are the, 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 the first homology groups which come from the boundary. The boundary uh, gives zero intersection with everybody else. So if we kill the boundary, we are left with a non-degenerate bilinear form. In this in this subspace, and so, but now this this to give a geometric interpretation of this subspace is the following is the following. If you call f tilde lambda, f lambda, but you put a disk around each of the boundary components, then you're left with a compact surface, and this is a, the non-degenerate bilinear form in the compact surface. Now, uh, uh, we can do this for every value of lambda. And so the homological bundle, which is the bundle obtained for every point lambda, you put this H1 of F lambda set with, the interior, with this coproduct. And the algebraic monodromy map is the map uh, which you obtain when you go around uh, the circle. And it, it is a... An automorphism, so it's an isomorphism of the vector space, which is preserving the the the, the interior product. Now, uh, so uh, in in in, 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 in the books, they tell you the following thing. So you have this linear map, which is this uh, algebraic monodromy, and you decompose it into its semi-simple and unipotent part. Now, the semi-simple part is really a periodic matrix in this, in this situation. So you are decomposing the function as, as a periodic and a unipotent matrix. A unipotent matrix is a matrix which has all eigenvalues one. So you have pushed all the eigenvalues to the periodic part and you're left with, in the unipotent part with a non-periodic part. So this is a pro, an algebraic procedure to decompose uh, 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 the, mono, the algebraic monodromy matrix. And so uh, this unipotent matrix can be seen as the identity plus N. N in this case will be a nilpotent matrix, N squared is equal to zero. And N is defined as the logarithm of the unipotent part of M lambda in more general dimensions. So there's an algebraic procedure to get the N. Now, the main algebraic actor in what I want to say today is the following symmetric bilinear form. So we want to, you have alpha and beta. So you apply N to the alpha. So you apply this uh, nilpotent part to one factor. And then you do coproduct with the beta. So alpha and beta. You do N, you apply to the alpha, and then you do coproduct with beta. And so this gives a, a, a symmetric bilinear form. And so what we, I wanted to understand is this, uh, to give a geometric meaning to this bilinear form. So we know the meaning of coproduct, but this is, a, and coproduct is an anti-symmetric bilinear form in this, in, 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 in a surface case. In, in this case, this will be a symmetric bilinear form. And so we want to understand what's the geometric meaning of this bilinear form. So it, from the point of view of algebra, it happens that is in this H1 of F lambda set, we have the image of N and we have the annihilator of N so this gives a flag of, sep of vector spaces in H1, which is defined algebraically. We, we're using the N. And this also gives an, a map which goes from H1 divided by the annihilator of N into the image of N, which induces a non-degenerate bilinear form in H1 divided by the kernel. <clears throat> and so, it, it, from the point of view of algebra, the question is, is this bilinear form positive definite? Now, in, in that sense, from the algebraic point of view, I see no reason why it should be a positive definite bilinear form. 
we 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 cancel we cancel the kernel in in such a way as to make it a non-degenerate symmetric bilinear form, but then it could have mixed signs. So the, our main result says that actually this form is going to be positive definite, but the proof goes through a geometric interpretation of the n using this picture, which I uh, suggested before. So now let me go back to this uh, geometric picture of the geometric weight flag. And then this uh, flag in H1 that I sh uh, 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 showed you that you could obtain algebraically was Javier, can was I interrupt you for a second and maybe we can ask the audience if there is any question about the definitions of things you are telling us? Just we can stop for one minute and ask for questions before you give us the answer to your question. Does anyone have a question that you can put it in the chat? Hmm? Is everything okay? Okay, sorry, I'll let you go on. Okay, so so uh, so what we have obtained, so the, the algebra tells, tells us that in, the, the, uh, so the monodromy is an automorphism of H1, and is some a, a nilpotent map that we obtain from an algebraic decomposition of the monodromy map. And from this, we obtain this bilinear form. And it's a symmetric bilinear form. Now, the question is, is this a positive definite, uh, uh, why should this be a positive definite uh, a bilinear form? Now, if one is acquainted with Riemann positive, uh, uh, this Riemann-Hodge positivity theorem, then uh, that's why one suspects that this might be a positive definite a bilinear form. So what we're going to do is we're going to obtain a geometric way to obtain this filtration. And so <clears throat> the geometric way will be is, is the following. So uh, here we have before the, the image of N was over here. The, the image of N was here and the kernel of N was here. So now what we're going to have here is the C module generated by this closed, uh, so th this, this is circles around the axons. So you get the part of the homology, which is generated by, this, by the closed loops around the axons. And this H1 of Sj of Z, is those closed loops that are completely contained in one in, in, in the sum of the different neurons. So the loops that the, the, the elements in the first homology, uh, 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 the elements in the first homology that are not contained in, 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 in the direct sum of homology in, in, in the neurons is precisely the ones that you go from one and then you come back with the other. So these cycles that are passing from one into the other are the part of the homology that you do not have in here. So if you take the quotient, the, the quotient of the one cycles <clears throat> over this, so these ones is, 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 are the periodic ones. So the monodromy map has a part which is the, 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 the module generated by the H1s of the subsurfaces, but since in each subsurface is periodic, then this part of the homology will be a periodic part, is a periodic part of, 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 of the homology under the monodromy map. So if we take the quotient of the one cycles over the periodic ones, we obtain a map which, 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 which has values in this H1 of the vanishing. So how do you do this? So you take a loop and then you intersect the loop, this loop alpha, you intersect it with these CLs, which are these circles around each of the axons. And then you put the weight I, I recall you that at each point we had a weight 
because it, it depended on the quotient, the, or the, quotient the, the quotient of the multiplicity of the two divisors, which are represented by this uh, axon. And so what we have here is uh, this, this geometric N, which is doing the following. You take a closed path, you intersect the closed path with this circle CL, but then you multiply by the homology class of the CL in the surface, you put the weight and then you sum. So this is a, 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 a so the, the, this is a geometrical way to define a, an NG. Now this NG is nilpotent because the image is contained in the module generated by the CLs, but this, this CLs you can move uh, in, in, in the axons and they have empty intersections. So, so <clears throat> this, this, uh, <clears throat> the, 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 this map goes into the vanishing. So we're calling these vanishing cycles are the ones generated by the circles in the axons. This module over here is the H periodic part. And if we take the quotient, then we have a map which, uh, which, which is actually an isomorphism uh, an isomorphism between these two uh, vector spaces. Now, uh, let's see. okay. So now uh, we have a, this bilinear form, which is defined geometrically, which is the following. So you, we take alpha and beta two paths, and then you do n alpha and beta. And, and then you, you do a wedge product with beta. And so this means N alpha is the sum. And then <clears throat> you're doing this, 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 this sum with weights. And then you're intersecting alpha with these circles still CL and then the product and you sum. So, and this is a positive definite matrix. This is a positive definite bilinear form because these rational numbers that I mentioned, this quotient of the two multiplicities of the divisor are positive numbers. And so this defines a positive definite bilinear form. And this N is codifying the Jordan block structure of this, of this geometric monodromy in the sense that a, a, uh, so in, in, in the sense that it is since it's the identity plus n and the n only has terms in the first factors, then the monodromy has this form and the n has this uh, other form. Now, so the, the geometric weight flag. So the, the theorem we have is is, is, the, is the following. No, I mean between all this group of people that I mentioned. So uh, the algebraic and the weight and the geometric weight filtration coincide. So this is giving a geometric interpretation of some object which was defined algebraically. Then two is the geometric and the algebraic bilinear forms coincide. And then we can form <clears throat> in, in, in this a, a graph that I mentioned, this gamma tilde, which is a graph over the resolution graph, then we can put on this graph a positive definite bilinear form in the first homology group of this uh, graph with integer coefficients, which is the one I, 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 I defined. And then the result is that this using some other language connecting to some other area of algebraic geometry, this is a polarized tropical curve. So we have produced from the non-periodic part of the monodromy, a polarized tropical curve. And so this in particular says that this H1 of this graph is equal to this H1 of the first homology group of this Milner fiber divided by this periodic part. So this is the non-periodic part of the, uh, of, of the monodromy. And observe that if we take a basis, a basis of homology, starting first with these vanishing cycles, starting first with the vanishing cycles, then taking this periodic part and then completing, 
then the matrix of intersection has this form. It has some zeros here above, and then in the anti-diagonal, this is the interior product. This is the co-product of of the pieces in 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 in, 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 in this uh, of the neurons of the neurons, and this other part. It is anti-symmetric, so this is this this, this is a, a minus transpose of the other. But the funny thing is that this is a positive definite matrix here, which is the one which is required for the definition of a tropical curve. Now let me finish with some examples. So, so uh, very quickly. So if we take this x six plus y seven and x seven to y six. This is the resolution graph, and this is the graph which is obtained by this process, this gamma tilde. And then from this, one can see uh, this, uh, the first homology groups are these ones, and this is the intersection matrix. And then you can proceed and do an, another example. Here we do another example. So here we have the resolution graph. Here is the graph. Uh, this uh, other graph, which is obtained, it, it, this is also going the semi-stable, uh, the, the graph of the semi-stable reduction. So what I'm giving is a geometric interpretation of this semi-stable reduction. And then here is, we have an, another example with a, another sophisticated graph, but, uh, and then uh, you can find these examples in the paper in archive that uh, is in the abstract. So, uh, and, and this part, which I explained, is only the topological part, and but we're interested in, in, in relating it with the algebraic part, which is this growth in the duality, but uh, we haven't finished that part of the, of the lecture. So th thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Javier. Nice mixture of algebra, geometry, and topology. So, are there any questions for Javier? Well, someone loved your lecture. Someone else, do we have questions? You can, maybe you can unmute yourself or you can write in the chat. I have a small question. Uh, uh, when you, how do you prove that uh, the, the endomorphism N is uh, symmetric. Excuse me, how, how do you prove that the... The endomorphism N is uh, symmetric. Ah, the, the, that it's symmetric. So this, 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 this you can see from this, uh, uh, see from, from this, um, uh, so here, here it is. So we have this, this product of this alpha and beta, is this n alpha with beta. So this n alpha is this sum over here. So if you write this in this form, it's very clearly that it's symmetric mm -hmm. because you are intersecting alpha with the with this so uh, with the centers of the uh, of the axons. Mm -hmm. And then fr from here is is it, 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 so from this form, it's very clear, but do you, do you have uh, an explanation uh, a priori? Yeah, from the algebraic point of view, it is because the, this, this, this N is part of an automorphism of the bilinear form. So the logarithm of the unipotent part of the matrix is anti-symmetric with respect to the bilinear form. So part of the trick here is how to use this bilinear... One is uh, used to have these bilinear forms for Riemannian uh, bilinear form. So this is a non, is, is alternating. So, uh, so the, the algebraically, it is because uh, it is an, an automorphism of the bilinear form. Oh, so and it's and because geometrically, it's just yeah. this formula. Okay, okay, thank you. And, and, and also from this, you can see that it's positive definite because if you put alpha and alpha, you have this expression and you, you have mm. these weights which are positive weights. And so this mm -hmm. gives the positivity of the bilinear form. So this gives a geometric proof of this positivity uh, of the bilinear form. Good. Thank you. Uh, so we have another question from Laura Ortiz-Bobadilla. She asked, 
Can you repeat the main idea of the geometric wave flag? Of the geometric wave flag. flag. The, yeah. Yeah, the, the geometric wave. Yeah, sure. So, <clears throat> so see, uh, uh, so the weight flag, the, the weight flag. So we're going to, to, to we, we have H1, which are all the closed loops, all the all, sums of closed loops in the fiber F lambda the, the, with weights. Mm -hmm. Now you can consider the, the sum, but only taking the sum around these vanishing cycles, these cycles which are uh, around the neurons. So these, these, these vanishing cycles, so this forms the first part of the flag. The second part of the flag is that you consider the sum of all closed paths which are contained in, in, the, in, in, the, uh, in, in the neurons. Now, in particular, this, 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 this thing around the axon, I can push it down in, as a, to a homology class in, in the neurons, so in that sense, we have that this space is contained in this other space. Now, this actually is the orthogonal space to this one with respect to the bilinear form in the sense that if you consider a homology class with, whose intersection with all these classes is zero, then it is a direct sum of things which are contained in the neurons. So this is, this is the orthogonal to this one. So this is a self-dual uh, flag. And, and so this, that's why this flag is vanishing cycles contained in periodic cycles and contained in one cycles. So if you take the one cycles modulo the periodic, then this gives you the anti-periodic part of the, of, 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 of the homology. And, and so this is, this is, this is the, 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 the geometric interpretation of the natural flag contained in the homology of the Milner fiber. Laura says, thanks a lot. Okay, do you have any other questions? If there okay. are no more questions, <laughs> I stop the recording. And we thank Javier again. <laughs>